Where the hell have you been? What took you so long? Where's the rest of you? You're the reinforcements Vinny promised us, right? Who else? Max Payne 2 is probably the closest thing we've ever gotten to a perfect third person shooter and there's two kinds of people in this world, right? There's those who like it and then there's those who are wrong. And one thing that I've always found very similar to Max Payne's premise is the Punisher comic book series. I mean, they're pretty similar stories. Frank was a Marine and Max was a cop and they both had their families killed with the mafia being heavily involved. Then they went on a lawless one man war against crime, skating that thin line between good and evil. Not to mention, they both seem to have an affinity for killing lots of bad guys. I'm not gonna go on about those games and tell you what you already probably know. I will just say though that if you haven't played and finished all three of these games, well, then you're dead to me. So what better way to bring the two together though than with the highly entertaining Punisher Warzone mod for Max Payne 2, created by a dude named Anti-Evil and released originally back in 2011. The kind of thing that really only exists because of PC gaming, and that accessibility to modding that was granted by the platform way back in the early 2000s. Oh. What's that supposed to mean? Right, so a bit of a history lesson because most people might not know this, but back in 2004, there was a really good Punisher game that came out, which, although being a pretty stock standard third person shooter, did have the benefit of being based off one of the best Marvel characters of all time, not to mention having some really gruesome gameplay. You don't scare me. Along with murdering everybody, it basically let you interrogate bad guys like you were Jason Voorhees, before either then sparing them or finishing them off in brutal fashion. You could hold someone down and threaten them with a power tool, you could dangle a rack of knives over their head or throw them into shark infested water. It was amazing. It wasn't a fantastic shooter, but it was competent and it had some really cool cameos from a lot of other Marvel characters, which made the whole thing highly enjoyable. Ah, you hurt me. I mean, I'm not even that much of a hardcore fan, but I still got a bit of a fanboy boner when characters like Black Widow, Nick Fury, and even Iron Man turned up during the game. What are our losses? So off the back of that, what this mod does is basically carry across the mechanics of that game into Max Payne 2. So it's less about popping in and out of bullet time every second and more just playing it like a standard run and gun third person shooter. You get a bit of slowed down time whenever you jump dodge and there's a new rage mode, but that's about it. And honestly, I would have been happy with this mod if it just took the characters, the setting and the weapons out of the Punisher universe and added them into Max's. Isn't that a bit melodramatic? But this thing goes one step further and outright copies the entire game mechanics over, along with adding in some new levels of its own. Aside from having a bunch of different costume changes throughout the game, including versions with or without trench coats, the mod also allows you to play through as John Bernthal's version from the Netflix series. And if that ain't enough, there's also the option to play through as Duke Nukem. Yeah, the king himself. Though the absolute lack of sound clips replacing Max's voice work is kind of criminal. Motherfucker! This time though, the health meter is suitably replaced with an ego meter and some of the guns are replaced with Duke's iconic arsenal, namely the shotgun and the inclusion of the Ripper cannon. Other characters also get the reskin treatment. I mean, for starters, Mona Sachs is replaced by Black Widow, who I'm pretty sure is just Jill Valentine's model from Resident Evil 5. Well, you should know. Not that I'm complaining. I mean, that redesign was peak Kuma material. This was a mistake. Detective Winterson is replaced with Molly Richterfen and Jim Rivera is replaced with Detective Soap. Then Vinnie Gogniti is replaced with Jigsaw and Vlad for some reason is replaced with Max because yeah, that makes sense. The bullshit. Even some of the minor characters like Kaufman, the dude who heads up the cleaners is now swapped out for Bullseye. And instead of just the Russian mafia, you're also up against the Yakuza. I don't know what they do here. It's just a job. Then you will die too. It is pretty funny seeing a lot of these characters and enemy factions swapped around, even if the character models for some of these are just downright horrendous. Yeah, get used to seeing warped joints and animations that don't quite look all that seamless because yeah, this mod's full of them. I think probably one of my favorite changes though is the music from the Punisher game that replaces all of Max Payne 2's soundtrack. I mean, nothing against the music in Max Payne 2, but there's something undeniably epic about the music from that Punisher game. It was just so comically over the top and melodramatic that it made the action just that much more fun. Fucking hell! 
but it's really the gunplay that's had the biggest changes. You still control Frank like you would Max, you run around with the keyboard, you aim and shoot with the mouse, and you can jump, dodge left, right, forward, or backward. But you're no longer going to be popping pills like their breath mints. Instead, there's now a regenerating health system, which actually is a bit of a godsend because you take damage so fucking quickly in this mod. Holy shit! And I think it actually works a lot better with Frank's character, keeping it more in line with him being this unstoppable force of nature with an inhumanly high pain tolerance. Every single gun from Max Payne 2 has been outright replaced along with a bunch of new ones. There's pistols, submachine guns, assault rifles, and an automatic shotgun, which are clearly replacing the Berettas, the MAC-10, the AK-47, and the Jackhammer. But then there's some new hard-hitting weapons as well, like a goddamn M60, which Frank carries around so effortlessly, you'd think the thing is made out of tissue paper. What I think's probably the best new gun, though, is a revolver that's called the Raging Bull, which pretty much one-shots every single enemy. Also doing a pretty nice job of highlighting the increased blood and gore effect that the mod adds in as well. Yep, this is a damn gory game, son, and it just reignites my love for those over-the-top blood decals. But I think the biggest change, though, is how the mod does away with a traditional bullet time mechanic and replaces it with Frank's rage mode instead. So, like I said before, instead of being able to pop in and out of bullet time whenever you want, you first got to build up the rage meter by getting kills. Then once that meter is full, you can finally activate it, which sends Frank into what can only be described as PTSD mode, where you hear all these nightmarish voices and traumatic events replayed inside his head. This is the closest thing we get to bullet time, and it slows down time to an absolute crawl. It's a genuinely unsettling glimpse into the messed up mind of a guy that's kind of teetering between being in control of his actions, and then just losing himself and becoming this unstoppable criminal killing machine. It's kind of odd though how this mechanic remains unchanged when you're playing as Black Widow, who just replaces the Mona Sachs levels. But then again, she's also kind of damage good, so maybe on some level it still makes sense. You should know. The hardest thing about me doing these mod corner videos is trying to find something to complain about. To be honest, there's not really all that much stuff worth complaining about. I guess the only issue is that if you don't like the original Punisher game, well, then this ain't going to win you over. And the sheer speed at which you sometimes just get your ass handed to you probably isn't going to help either. That's my ass! Overall though, I had a pretty good time with this mod, it just has a few niggling annoyances and they're not really game breaking problems, but they're just the kind of things you're gonna start to notice the more you play it. I mean for starters, these new weapon particle effects are kinda cool, but sometimes, these effects combined with the weapon shake from firing guns makes it really hard to see what the hell is going on. I'm not kidding when I say that the weapon shake in this thing is likely to induce seizures. Weapon damage is also, like I said before, kind of unbalanced, and I've lost count of the amount of times I've just been absolutely shredded by enemies. This is a good example, I think, of why game mods that screw around with weapon and enemy balancing can often feel like a bit of a hot mess. When people start poking around with weapons, stats, and enemy health, well, this is kind of what you get as the outcome. The bullseye fight is a perfect example of this. In the original game against Kaufman, this fight is over in about 5 seconds. Here though, Bullseye takes literally hundreds of bullets before he goes down and it's just kinda pointless. It's not making him any more difficult or challenging, it doesn't make the fight more epic or enjoyable, I mean there's nothing gained from him having so many health points. Last one. I also really dislike the fact that you have to manually pick up every single weapon you come across, even just to get spare ammo. You've got to stand over the weapon and press the control button to pick it up, and all I can say here is, why? The bullshit! Off the back of that, this mod also does that weird thing where it discards all of the remaining ammo you've got left in a magazine whenever you reload. So if you reload a gun that's got like 14 shots left for instance, those 14 bullets don't go back into your reserves, they're just discarded. As if the magazine itself has been thrown into the trash. It took me a fair bit of time to get used to this, and what it means is that you can't tactically reload before entering a new room, unless you're happy discarding the dozen or so bullets remaining in that magazine. And again, yes, it's not a game-breaking problem, but it's just one of those things where you've got to ask yourself, like, why was this added in? This isn't a tactical, realistic shooter. This is a Punisher mod for Max Payne 2 that also lets you play as Duke Nukem. 
And also one where Black Widow's walking around with so much cleavage that trying to avoid it's like trying not to look at the goddamn sun. Yes. Come on, Max. Gotta say too that the original levels that this mod adds in, they aren't very good. I get that they're not made by professionals, but yeah, that sure hat feels playing them as well. The first one is just you against a bunch of bullet sponge enemies in a garage where you've just got to gun them all down and it honestly lasts all of five minutes. The second one is inside a Yakuza nightclub, which starts off in front of this wall here that these assholes can even shoot you through. So yeah, that's fun. Followed by a boss fight against this guy who seems to be wearing the nano suit from Crisis. Yeah, I know this is probably a character model taken out of some other game, but whoever he's supposed to be, well, that went right over my pasty little head. The third level is set in a penthouse where after you've killed the Yakuza boss with his own katana, which is pretty badass. You then have to find your way out of the building by holding out against waves of enemies that keep spawning in. Finished up with a boss fight against this heavily armored juggernaut in a tight corridor. Yeah, and I love too how this one random laptop's just got some naked girl on it. What? And then the final level takes place on the rooftop of Rikers Island, where you've got to shoot Jigsaw a few hundred times until he dies. There's a few other campaigns as well, but it again pains me to say that they aren't really very good. There's another one gunning down gangsters in a warehouse as a younger Punisher. There's one as Black Widow, and then one as Max Payne. Then you've got this Punisher vs Deadpool level, which is based off one of the few comics I've actually read. But with this one, I just had no idea what the hell I was even supposed to be doing. I ran out of ammo after 10 seconds, and then I just had nothing to shoot him with. I don't know, maybe this map's just unfinished. But as a consolation, this level does have another naked girl on a wall, which is either the mod maker's girlfriend or just some lucky lady from the internet that he's got a fascination with. This thing sucks. But I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that you're not really going to be playing this mod for its original single player content. If you want to hop back into the Max Payne 2 campaign, though, and blast your way through it as everyone's favorite PTSD stricken vigilante, well then that, on the other hand, is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. You can even play through the whole thing with first person mode turned on as well. And I gotta say that unloading into enemies in first person mode with the M60 or the auto shotgun is kind of hard to fault. It just makes me wish even more that we get some kind of proper Punisher first person shooter game. Honestly, there's just not much going on in the gaming world right now that ultimately is holding my interest. But with the time that I spent with it, brief as it might have been, killing bad guys as the Punisher in Max Payne's universe was a hell of a lot of fun. And if this video achieves nothing else aside from just making a new Max Payne fan out of someone, well, then I'll consider this mission accomplished. Bullshit! Oh.